Hey friends, I'm Bo Ross, and if there's one thing that I genuinely hate, it's sensationalist, clickbait titles and thumbnails. But I honestly could have titled this video Framework Laptop 16 plus Oculink, this changes everything. And it genuinely would not have been hyperbole. This, my friends, is the Framework Laptop 16 Oculink Edition. Let's take a look. If you tuned into my last Framework 16 video, you'll know that I expressed a genuine love and admiration for this computer, while also being honest about its bountiful shortcomings. Not all, but many of those shortcomings were related to the dedicated GPU module, AMD's 7700S. It's just underpowered, certainly for a machine in this price range. It forced the laptop to borrow juice from the battery while it's plugged in, caused the system fans to be unbearably loud, and added size and weight to what's an otherwise relatively light portable computer. It was just such poetic irony that the feature that put this laptop onto a lot of people's radar, a modular replaceable GPU, was also the anchor that prevented it from ascending to the pantheon of mobile computing gods. As I touched on in my last framework video, one possible workaround was setting up an eGPU via one of the USB 4 ports, which I will admit helped matters significantly. I've used several Thunderbolt and USB 4 eGPUs over the years because, at least on paper, it really does seem like the best of both worlds. An Ultrabook in the streets and a gaming computer in the sheets. Unfortunately, in practice, that lofty promise is never quite achieved. The experience is often frustrating and wildly inconsistent depending on the game or task at hand. Well, much like Sting descending from the rafters, Oculink has finally arrived to wake us from this purgatorial nightmare. I've been using a DIY Oculink solution with my Framework 16, and every single one of those aforementioned problems caused by the 7700S are handily solved with this setup. But before we dive into performance, let's talk a little bit about how to pull this off and what's required. So an important disclaimer is that I am of average intelligence at best. I'm the type of person that has much more curiosity than prowess. I like to learn a little about a lot without ever gaining any semblance of specialized expertise. I can take exactly zero credit <laughs> for the genesis and development of this wonderful setup. There's a lengthy thread over on the Framework Community Forum that I previously perused, and I'm simply riding the proverbial coattails of the gurus over there. That thread should also be your first stop if you'd like to take a run at this setup for your Framework 16. With that in mind, I'm not gonna get super granular about Oculink, what it is, why it works, because I'd either be embellishing the bounds of my own understanding or simply regurgitating the thoughts of others, neither of which are particularly appealing to me. The short version is that Oculink is an interface that allows for the use of PCIe externally. In this case, we're using an M.2 slot, which was previously possible through the 2280 slot on the Framework 16's mainboard, but wasn't really feasible if you wanted luxuries like a functioning trackpad or keyboard. What really unlocked this as a viable option was the long-awaited release of Framework's M.2 Expansion Bay Adapter. This allows you to incorporate two additional M.2 slots into your existing Expansion Bay shell, which in turn gives us easy access to route an Oculink adapter out the rear of the machine. So once you've got your M.2 adapter installed, you're a couple of random parts and some 3D printing away, from your very own Oculink eGPU setup. Mine took a little bit of trial and error, but has been working flawlessly since I got everything dialed in. I'm using one of the Oculink docks from a company called Minisforum. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, which I didn't know too much about, but honestly, can't recommend enough. Feels very well made and is relatively affordable by eGPU standards. I also managed to find a 5070 Ti for MSRP at my local micro center. And to say that this setup has exceeded my expectations would be criminally understated. 
the performance has been sterling. I expected it to obliterate the 7700S and outperform my USB 4 eGPU, and both of those things definitely came to fruition. What I wasn't anticipating was how much different the feel of this configuration would be. In my recent Legion Pro 7 Dragon Range video, I said that it felt like using a desktop. Well, as incredible as that computer is, this setup kind of puts it to shame. It's the smoothest, most pleasant experience I've had with a laptop ever, and it's not particularly close. I've been testing all sorts of different games, and even the most demanding titles play very well without the ubiquitous lag or random frame drops you become accustomed to with a Thunderbolt or USB 4 eGPU. Battlefield 2042 plays beautifully at 4K and comfortably pushes 120 frames with mixed settings and DLSS set to balanced. As you might expect, competitive shooters like Overwatch and Marvel Rivals are a cakewalk. I did encounter some bottlenecking from the processor on particularly CPU intensive titles like Helldivers 2, but still achieved a very stable 80 to 90 frames at 4K. Even Cyberpunk 2077 manages a comfy 60 to 70 frames at 4K with high settings and ray tracing turned on. According to Hardware Monitor, it's able to pull 250 plus watts and 95% utilization of the 5070 Ti. And the fact that you're able to get more graphics performance than the new 5090 laptops is just wild. Most of those machines start at $4,500 before factoring in tariffs. In addition to the immense performance gains, offloading the work of the GPU outside of the chassis provides some other very welcome benefits as well. Starting with my favorite, noise levels. Sweet Jesus. It almost brought a tear to my eye the first time I did some gaming with this setup. Not only is this the most powerful laptop I've ever used, it's now among the quietest, which is such a night and day difference compared to using the 7700S, when I thought the laptop might actually take flight and levitate. It should be no surprise that this completely remedies the annoying parasitic battery drain issue from before. What was kind of a pleasant surprise is that you can actually get away without using the stock power adapter at all, if you're connecting to a dock that can supply 100 watts. I did notice about a 5% performance difference in benchmarks, but for those that prefer to plug in as few cables as possible, it's probably a worthwhile trade-off. And the outstanding performance extends beyond gaming. I edited a multicam 6K open gate video for my little music channel, and it chewed through it with ease. Timeline performance was flawless, and render times were blazing fast. Clearly there's a lot to love with this setup, but what's the catch? Honestly, there are very few downsides to speak of. Oculink is unfortunately not hot swappable, so it is recommended to shut down your computer before connecting or disconnecting, which is a definite advantage of a Thunderbolt or USB 4 solution. It kind of makes sense though, since it's essentially a PCIe connection and you wouldn't necessarily want to pop the GPU out of your desktop while it's in use either. There's the added expense, which is not insignificant, especially while the GPU market is still kind of touch and go. I realize that not everyone is lucky enough to live five minutes from a micro center, so finding a decent GPU at or below MSRP could be a challenge right now. And the last one is kind of nitpicky and esoteric, but I tend to do most of my computing away from my main desk, either at my little treadmill desk, maybe on the couch or at the kitchen table, etc. And there is a price to be paid for having all of your GPU power tied to your main workstation area. There are definitely times that I might like to do a little gaming or video editing elsewhere and miss the convenience of an incorporated, dedicated GPU. I have been pleasantly surprised by the performance of the integrated 780M. I think I was kind of sleeping on this thing. You can definitely do some casual to mid-range gaming with it, but when it comes to that aforementioned multicam 6K Premiere project, that's a big no-go. My framework laptop has always felt like a cool computer with a heart of gold and some serious limitations and compromises. Like I could make it work for my needs, but just barely. Adding this Oculink setup has really kind of flipped the script and I think unleashed the potential of this platform. I haven't even really talked about the fact that you get another full-blown M.2 slot out of the deal. So I've now got a pretty thin and light laptop with solid battery life, 
that's toting a whopping 10 terabytes of SSD storage and 96 gig of RAM. That can also easily surpass the graphics performance of the most powerful gaming laptops on the market for a fraction of the price. And that's before even factoring in Framework's truly unprecedented repairability and modularity. Thanks to Oculink, there simply isn't anything else on the market that can compete with the performance and versatility of this laptop. And I can honestly now say that regardless of price, there's not another computer I would choose to daily drive over my Framework 16. At least for me, this genuinely changes everything. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. That can also easily surpass the graphics performance of the most <laughs> of the most expensive gaming laptops on the market for a, <laughs> for a fraction of the price.